a tourniquet on. I'm going to take the capital knife, mm-hmm. and what I'm going to do is cut at an angle so that when I can fold it over, I can put the stitches on the side. Mm-hmm. That way, the, I'm not going to have a scar up under the socket of the hook, right? So I'm going to cut at an angle, and I'm going to just cut straight down to the bone with a capital knife. Then I'm going to take the Catlin knife, and I'm going to loosen up the ligaments and tendons and things. So I don't want to go straight down through. I want to expose some of the bone because, A, the flesh will clog the bone saw, and, B, what I want is I don't want to have to stretch that stump over the end of the bone. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to cut the flesh here, pull it back, and cut the bone here mm-hmm. so I've got kind of a pocket. Then we take the, once we've got the, the, the got it retracted, we go through the bone saw. Okay, so that part's now gone. Mm-hmm. I've got to do something to stop them from bleeding to death. I can either cauterize mm-hmm. with a hot iron, mm-hmm. or I can grab my crane's beak, reach in, grab the artery, pull it out of ways, and then I'll just slide a ligature down over it. And then I can just go around and get each blood vessel and tie it off. Mm-hmm. Loosen the tourniquet, check for, check for leaks, you know, fix anything that's squirting. And then um, at that point, um, I am going to uh, pad the stump. I'm going to take some loose hemp or flax or toe or fibers. I'm going to soak it in astringents to keep it from festering. Poke it down in there and pad the end of the bone. Then I'm going to fold it over and I'll stitch on the side. And what I'll do is I'll go in either side and I'll go in either side and I'll put in. Uh, some twine or linen ribbon or something. Um, and what that'll do is that'll act as a wick, so when you get uh, blood and pus and stuff building up, it'll ooze out through there. And then and then we take our needle, we stitch them up. And again, keep, keep it clean. Um, we're going to tell them to pack it with hot cloths twice a day. Um, as it starts healing, what you do is you you have your uh, you have your uh, fiber drain stuck in there, and as it starts healing, you don't want it to heal from the outside because that'll cause. If it heals on the outside, then you got infection building up in here. You want it to heal from the inside out. So what you're going to do is, as it heals, you're going to inch those dra- inch those drains out, and eventually they come out. And you put a, a couple more stitches in, and you know. And by the way, I got a friend down that way that makes hooks. <laughs> what is the survival rate? We don't have anything anything resembling statistics. We do know that all the, all through history, there's been a, a, sur- a thriving prosthesis, a prosthetic industry. Mm. You know, there's always been a market for hooks and peg legs and stuff. So at least some of these people have to live. Um, there's a guy named Gotts von Berlichingen who had an armor. Did you ever see Young Frankenstein? That police chief with the. Thank you. The dry run we'll do two times in a row, the third time will be loud. Stand that guard your pan when ready. And again, no powder, give fire! Boom. Bang! Very well, musket down. Drill one more time to get the rhythm correct. Your matches are flung, your musket butt is on the floor. Four rounds. Close right. Musketeers, make ready your piece! Dog well your pants. 
<laughs> Present your piece! <laughs> no powder, give! Fire! Boom! Bang! Butt to the ground! Third time to charm! With powder, musketeers! Make ready your piece! With the powder! Guard blow your pants. Present your peace. to go north and say we're back here on the chart yes. we're helping to go over here and as long as we're heading north basically and we know from that speed we're covering maybe 60 miles a day we would probably be about here and we're hoping that we're heading in the right direction a minute off is 100 miles off at sea uh, well, no, you'd be surprised how accurate they can be. It's spot on with the GPS for latitude. I mean, we're going. I've never made one, so I'm learning. I'm, I'm learning as I go. So if you have somebody. Giant steak knife, all serrated. Uh, but I personally think it was just this would be a more expensive type of blade to make. So it might just be saying, I've got a Porsche of swords to your, you know, Toyota. Um, or it could just look intimidating. Anyway, you would knock them out of the way as right. you grab them. What, but like it would. Uh 
they would fit in the groove. And that, that's a possibility yeah. also. But ex the only thing I would argue against that is that you see smaller swords mm -hmm. with the, the flame. Okay. So yeah. I don't know what purpose would it would serve be. there. Yeah. So. Any other questions? Where did the gunfire come from? Uh, it's capital knife, capital knife, you know, for amputations. I don't suppose they had anything in the way of obviously not modern things, other than, um, than boots. Best, your, best your, well, no, you don't want to use boots. Okay. Okay. Unconscious from alcohol equals alcohol poisoning. Ah. Um, it's also a vasodilator and an anticoagulant. That's not what you want in surgery. No. And and if you just get them drunk and you start and you stick a knife in them, then they got a mean drunk mm. who's trying to fight you while he's bleeding to death on your table. Um, you do have laudanum, opium and alcohol, so it's an alcoholic tincture of, of opium, um, opium gum, basically. And uh, you'll you'll give them enough to down them out, not not knock them out because that will kill them, but down them out. Oh well, man, it hurts, you know, and then give them the bite stick. And hold them down while you're cutting. Do they have any kind of topical anesthetics? Not really, no. Well, you've got you've got yarrow, which is mildly analgesic. It's about this is about like that tea. Mm. Okay. Um, but, um, if you have a bee sting or stump, something, tobacco has a slight anesthetic effect, and it also uh, denatures the toxin. Oh. You can also use it as a poultice on light, lightly infected stuff because nicotine kills germs as well as it kills everything else it touches. Mommy, mommy. Um, but yeah, as a since I'm a, a military surgeon and the nearest apothecary is going to be a lot away, I'm going to I'm going to stock up on things I need for a trip. Mm. Yeah, mostly things that I can use to clean cuts. You know, alcohol, vinegar, turpentine, gunshot ointment, comfrey to speed healing. Yarrow for uh, yarrow, which is basically back team. Um, what is this that doesn't have words on it? Sulfur. That's the alchemical symbol. Ah. So I can use sulfur and olive oil to make an itch cream. Okay. And you rub it on the itchy bits, gives you some topical relief, also chases away the bugs. And of course, a, a goodly chunk of your itches are going to be bug born. Mm. So that is, so it acts as, as both a topical analgesic and a, or a topical. Anti-pruritic, I should say, and and uh, and an insect, and, uh, insect repellent, or an arthropod repellent. Uh, 